Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. When we look back at the performance of our models over the last week, and what we have on the left there was the forecast for the time period leading up to yesterday evening. And we can see that we were expecting a better precipitation across Brazil's central and northern growing areas with drier conditions east and also drier conditions to the south, including parts of northern Argentina. And overall, we'd say that the model did a pretty good job when comparing it to the satellite estimations in this region. Now remember, this this time of year, we should be seeing across Brazil's central and northern growing areas precipitation totals kind of in this range of colors. So to see this, we, we would actually call that much more normal rainfall for this time of year. But it was drier to the south, a bit more sporadic on the rainfall from Mato Grosso do Sol through Parna, Rio Grande do Sol. But I want to talk about this right in through here. This is one particular area which ran kind of north and south that maybe the models didn't quite have a full grip on, and it was due to a thunderstorm complex that raced through that area back on Monday. And I want to talk to you about that thunderstorm complex because this is what it looked like. Just grabbed a satellite image here. You can see the normal Brazilian convection. This is the daily monsoonal storms that pop up in this area, much drier to the east as we saw here. Uh, but look at this thunderstorm complex right down here. Infrared satellite temperatures would tell us these were deep thunderstorms, probably producing quite a bit of hail and they moved very quickly from the south to the north here but they went right across the heart of some of uh, Argentina's most productive ground. Now, they went over Cordoba, and you probably saw, maybe if you follow on, on Twitter, you probably saw quite a bit of the uh, flooding uh, uh, stuff that we saw, uh, videos out of that region. But I went out to uh, the Argentinian uh, Meteorological Service, their website, to pull up the actual data from the rain gauges around Cordoba, and I basically saw this. These storms were moving fast. In general, less than, uh, you know, about, um, you know, 40 millimeters of rainfall. So what is that? That's about an inch. But they went through very, very, very quickly. And overall, we can't say that that, that rainfall event was corrective on the overall drought situation that's still going on in parts of Argentina. So much like we saw, you know, I hate to bring up this event, but you remember the massive derecho that hit parts of Iowa this past year? Those storms move very quickly, and while they produce very locally heavy rainfall amounts, you know, it wasn't the kind of rainfall that you need to really end at drier conditions. And we saw that the flash drought that Iowa was enduring wasn't ended by that storm. And it appears that this was not enough rainfall or not frequent enough to really be corrective of the drought issues that we're still experiencing in Argentina. But rain is good, and to get 40 millimeters, millimeters of it would be good as well. So from there, let's just take a look at the latest um, uh, root zone soil moisture map as we look here across parts uh, of South America. And again, we do still see, now this was through December the 28th, so those storms went right over the top of this, but was it going to be able to really change the wetness percentile here in the top four inches of soil? Um, possibly helping but not corrective. And there are still considerable pockets of drought across much of Brazil's growing areas as well. So this is still our background story to all of this. What's changing, uh, if anything? First of all, the Arctic, excuse me, the Antarctic Oscillation has been increasing since mid-November. So you can see it right in through here. And it is forecast to stay positive. Now, a positive Antarctic Oscillation tends to favor wetter conditions north in Brazil's central and northern growing areas and favors drier conditions in southern Brazil over to Argentina. That's one piece to this puzzle. The second piece is what's going on with the MJO. Now, with the La Nina reaching its peak, pushing those strong trade winds right across the central Pacific, the MJO is, I believe, just reacting to this. And it's getting... Well, as you can see here in the forecast, it's not out running around the map like I'm drawing like this. What it's doing is it's kind of popping out over here and then it's kind of moving around and it's staying largely within this null space. It does occasionally want to come out over here into phase two and three, but it wants to fade back into it. Now, remember, what we want to be on the lookout for as we move forward is if it comes out and stays over in phase four and five. Those will be the drier phases here uh, for the uh, MJO and Brazil's precipitation. But as it stands with it hanging around in the null space, this is not good evidence of being able to understand how the pattern is going to be influenced by the MJO. I can show you that here. With it over here in this region, the best upward motion, we have a lot of sinking over the Pacific and no real strong indication of influencing the monsoonal rainfall. So maybe we come back to the Antarctic Oscillation and some other features like systems passing through Argentina that'll be most critical. 
and we don't see those right now. With a lack of systems moving through Argentina, higher pressure is forecast to be maintained, and therefore this upcoming week is going to be a drier one for much of Argentina. We see more sporadic monsoonal thunderstorms across Brazil's central and northern areas, and overall you see on this map drier conditions being forecast by the European model, which we've been showing has been doing a pretty good job at picking up on the pattern overall. It's also dry in southern Brazil as well. If we go out into week two, we start to see better precipitation in through Brazil's, well, Parana and, and, and Mato Grosso do Sul over toward Bahia, Tocantins, uh, Minas Gerais, you know, this particular region. But drier in northern Mato Grosso, as we see here in the long range forecast. And the models can't seem to let go of the drier, higher atmospheric pressure influenced conditions that are over parts of Argentina, which we'd expect with the AAO going over to its uh, positive phase. So that this is consistent here. Now, here's one thing I want to put at the end of this video. Uh, we'll get new updates on this tomorrow, and I'll include them in my Monday report. But this was the latest forecast for January, and the model is giving us a very, what we'd say, La Nina look. And that is drier in January south over Argentina, and then dry here in the north. But in the middle here, from southern Mato Grosso through Mato Grosso do Sol de Parna, this region, then getting to Brazil's eastern growing areas over here, we see much wetter conditions. And then interestingly enough, if I look at the 30-day time period, that is January 12th through February 12th, look at how wet it's projected to be in Brazil's central and northern growing areas while dry in Argentina. Now, we got to think here, this is be the time period when we're trying to actively harvest a crop in this area. And if that's the case, I'm concerned here about how uh, the weather conditions may possibly slow down the harvesting of this first crop of soybeans and then the eventual planting of the um, safrina corn and cotton. So we'll have to watch it carefully to see uh, the newest updates to see if it continues to keep things wet going into February. But this could just mean potentially some delays I'm, I'm going to be concerned about here. I'll keep an eye on it. Report back to you on Monday, okay? Have a great rest of your week and Happy New Year. Thank you.